What's going on, guys? It's your host tonight. This is Ken Miller. You listen to Real Laughs on Real Radio 104.1. I am joined in virtual studios with my comedy brothers tonight. I got Mr. James John, Mike Hurley, he, and Miguel Colon Jr. My family's in the house, man. Hey, and we are joined by a special, special guest, the legend himself, strictly business, booty call, woo, <laughs> Juana <laughs> man, the proud family, <laughs> black dynamite, in living color, three comedy special. And he plays my favorite character for Martin Barnell Hill. Y'all yes. put your hands together and show your love for Mr. Tommy Davidson, everybody. Yeah. Uh, did you miss me? Did you miss me? <laughs> Tommy, that, that's, Tommy to the, I told you this when I featured for you last year. It's my favorite character because to this day, anytime I, I work with a comedian and they say, hey, man, you were great. Call me. And I call uh -huh. and text them and they never hit me back. Me and my wife call it the Varnell Hill. I got Varnell <laughs> Hill. This you, got, you got Varnell Hill. <laughs> I got Varnell Hill. Hey, man, Tommy Davis is at the Orlando Improv this weekend, January 28th and 29th. Four shows. Please come check them out. Tommy, anytime we interview anybody, we always got to know. We got to know the origin story, man. So how long you been doing comedy? When did you start? And how was your first ever show? It, I started in 86. Um, and a friend of mine, I got a job at a Ramada Inn as an assistant chef, you know, which is good for being 18 years old, you know? Oh, not and, bad at all. And, I, I can't and my that. buddy told me, my buddy told me, man, you the stupidest and I ever seen in my life, you should be out in Hollywood doing movies, doing this, that. And I was like, man, you man, you ain't gonna no job. So he so he hooked up a show for me at the worst strip club in Washington, DC. Oh, nice. I mean, and I got the top like of the stage and let me on stage. So I go down there and um <laughs> the guy looks me up and down. Man, the guy looks the guy, the manager looks me up and down and goes, Man, you got five minutes. So I look at my friend Howard and I was like, man, what am I gonna do? He said, I don't care what you do, just say something on that mic. And from the first thing I said, people laughed and I'm here with y'all. I mean, it, it, it happened nice, that way. Man. That's how nice. the drug starts, man. Once you get that first laugh on stage, ah, you hook the line, right. bro. <laughs> and, 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 so, and, and so Tommy, you out of DC, right? You say you out of yeah, DC? Yeah, so you with the Tony, Tony Woods and all those guys? Tony Woods, Martin Lawrence. That whole troop. Yeah. I just like to point out there's there's probably not a tougher audience than a group of men with their wives at home that came out for an hour that night to see some woman that wasn't their wife and all of a sudden they're like, All right, guys, stand right. by. We got a young man telling jokes for the first time. Right. If you can right. get laughs in that audience out of the gate the first time, you're gonna do okay. <laughs> you're gonna do okay. Well, you and, know, and, and, the strip club is bad. You know, like the you know, yep. it was really bad. And the girls dancing on the pole with the baby on the hip. <laughs> you know, like, like do I got to both of you? Yeah. He said hey, a baby hey, on the hip, bro. Hey, yeah, hey you want a lap dance? You gotta head. hold my baby. Yeah. No, it, true story. Put your hands head. together for <laughs> Cinnamon and her daughter Darlene. <laughs> and free pop starts. No, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, the oh, guards yeah. had these t-shirts on, and on the back of the t-shirt swear it said, please don't shoot him. <laughs> wow. We still need those wow. shirts, Tommy. <laughs> wow. yeah, but 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 that I know that was your start. That's not the hardest. What's the what's one of the hardest gigs you 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 remember doing? I uh, probably was th there's two. I um, but actually this one was easy, but the conditions were hard. I performed okay. in an empty pool in the summer what? on the diving board on the diving board <laughs> with one of those little elementary school uh, uh, sound systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? In Compton, for wow! A, for, a, for a community center, I was supposed to get paid a hundred, and the guy stiffed me on top of that. You know, Steve, wow. as a real as a real comedian, like, hey, hey, Tommy, who books that? Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, give me that book of info, man. Uh, I, was, I need to call the pool. Anybody from NWA there, though? Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, the guy that put me for that was a was a big Hollywood producer named Topper Carew. Mm. He had a he had a oh yeah, no Topper Carew. He, top of cool. he did Martin. Had a, yeah, he had a movie called uh, DC Cab out at the time. And oh, DC I, remember yeah. that. I remember that. Yeah, never, never, trust a, never trust a black man with clogs on. <laughs> <laughs> Advice we can all live by. That just sounds like an 80s movie. Like, we got to save the community center. We're going to put it on a comedy show in the empty pool. We'll have the right. comedian up on the diving right. board. Right. Montage. Yay. Hey, now strength. everybody break dance. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the hardest show was I did a show in um, Aspen, Colorado with, with Tim Allen. Oh, mm. wow. And 
and and um, I opened, and it was nothing but like eighty year old, seventy five year old white men. Oh my you know? god! Wow. So I'm going, you know, you know how Michael Jackson, you know Al Green, and I, I, and they were like, nah, we don't know nothing. <laughs> uh-uh. And and um, Jim Allen went up and did John Deere jokes. And, uh, 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 yeah. And, Tommy, um, did you wear the "Please Don't Shoot Him" shirt to that show? Please don't lynch him shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, man, if you tuning in, we got Tommy Davidson on the phone right now. Tommy will be at the Orlando Improv this weekend, January twenty eighth and 29th, four shows. Uh, Tommy, I was looking at your Wikipedia, bro. You have done everything. What's your favorite role? Favorite role of all time? Favorite role? Oh, that's probably hard. Was uh, it, my favorite role was probably um. Uh, sleep and eat in the movie uh bamboozle oh bamboozle wow. oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. my funnest role was uh my role as bobby in um strictly business which is my okay. favorite yeah dude okay. i watched yeah. strictly business yep. today just because she was gonna be on i paid uh-huh. three dollars and 99 cent to rent it so <laughs> are you getting royalties <laughs> you I'm get lie, a 75 man. cent check from me at least <laughs> i'm a fan of cream cream corn cream corn from black dynamite uh, <laughs> now let me let me say this though tommy generationally there's people who know you from everything like me and my family will first think oh tommy davidson uh, uh in living color and right. then my my younger sister she's 10 years younger than me she'll go oh tommy davidson proud family right you know yeah, and it's yeah, like right. so generationally there's people who recognize you for all different types of projects and that's something that's pretty unique in hollywood because there's a lot of people that you think of uh, you know, just the movies they did this, but but I mean, like I'm saying, there's kids that think Proud Family, and I know Proud Family. I think uh, it's coming back with like another yeah. uh, a movie yeah, for Disney. This, this month, this month, it's um the series, the new series is premiering on the Disney Channel. I mean, see, that's on, cool, on Disney man. Plus. Nice. Yeah, on Disney and that, Plus. That's- and that speaks to your talent, my friend, because every generation oh, knows you. Man. And and in this in this business, as you know, that is mm-hmm. not common, and that doesn't happen all the time for us. So, man, congratulations, and oh, you two need to keep you, going. Man. Thank oh, you. Man. And Proud Family is pretty revolutionary cartoon, man. I think a lot of people don't give it give it the props it deserves, but uh, it it's 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 a family just living out family life it's a it's that's a black right. family uh, right. with latino neighbors and there's nothing about it other than the fact that they 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 represent their culture there's nothing about it that couldn't be any other family oh the family you know? like that's that's absolutely. the thing about it. it's just the family nucleus with family problems you know yeah like, that's what I love about that. how did uh how did living color come about for you was that something where you were already on the end or did you have to go through the auditions and everything else or did yeah, you already did. pretty much know it was going around I actually passed on it when it came across, Did you? Wow. across, wow. it came across me because I had, I, I had a lot of um, ups and downs at the time in my career. I was the, one of the hottest comedians in Hollywood. So all these opportunities yes. came my way. I had a holding deal with Disney for like 250000 I had a wow. role on a, on a sitcom on CBS where I was the co-star ca- mm-hmm. called um, Murphy Brown. And oh, I had Brown. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. I didn't know. Oh, it was, but they gave me the, they gave me the the, the, the the role across from her, and then I huh. I had a choice to do uh, coming to America, uh, the TV series where I played hmm. his uh, little brother, you know, oh, wow. Wow. and um and uh, I had an audition for a different world, so so wow. I I um none of that worked out. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, none of it worked out. I mean, I was I was back to eating I was back to eating sizzling and, and, and minute rice and both of them didn't the market no more. So when they offered you live in color at the time, you're like, why would I want to be a part of an ensemble when I'm about to hit big on all this other stuff over here and have my own stuff? No, no actually I, I went back to stand up without sure of. Oh, okay. You know, I went back to the drawing board. I said, you know what? My manager actually said, let's just go back and hit the clubs and then we'll just go from there, man. Let's go off of your strength. Mm-hmm. And, um, Absolutely. Uh, they called me about in living color. My agent called me. And I said, Nah, that's all right. He said, Why don't you just audition? If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. You know. So I went in for the audition. I, I didn't do too well on sketches. I didn't know about them yet. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. doing them all my life. I didn't make the connection. But what happened was, they had a, a stand up audition. Stand up oh. comedy. Thirty of all the comics that you know, Jim Carrey. I mean, name them. Martin. Everybody was up for. The show John Leguizamo, everybody was impacted. Oh, wow. Everybody, wow! And um, I was number 30th. Ooh, I've been the there list. before, I've been <laughs> yeah, the yeah. competition yeah. plenty of times. I've been 31st out of 30. Yeah. And I was like, 
bring it. <laughs> bring it. That, I mean, that that's the best thing you can do is give me the last shot, buddy. Right. You know what I mean? There you go. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's, and and it's amazing. And I and said, you got the show. You know, no, that's no, amazing. No. It, it, and it's crazy that you say that when you first did the sketches audition that it wasn't that great because, man, you excelled at the. I mean, I remember Funky Finger Productions. That is oh, my jam, right. hey, bro. Baby, there you go. You got it. Yes, go, baby. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can die now. I can die. I'm going on. Oh, that's it. <laughs> where's my card? Where's my card? It was a card. From, from what Boom. I remember, Howard, yeah. Howard, where's my card? Boom. <laughs> from what I remember, you really became like the utility guy on that show. Like you worked your way into like, yeah, some guys had main sketches and everything else. You had main sketches, but you would see you popping up in like everything. Like it yeah. just oh, seemed man, like. I played, oh, I played the straight guy. But plenty of times <laughs> I played. I played the opposite. Yeah. Of the big characters, you know. And then I yeah. did a lot mm-hmm. of impressions on there. I did Michael Jackson. Yes, you did. Lee. Sugar mm-hmm. Ray yeah. Leonard, you know. Sugar Ray so Leonard was, with the yeah. three boxers and the baby sketch w- was dope, man. With yeah. Mike Tyson, Sugar Ray, and Muhammad Ali beauty. living in the house. Yeah. Thing mm-hmm. of I, pure beauty, you know. And I remember the Spike Lee joint with the butter, more better, more better butter. Yeah, more like better, I, butter, yeah. more better. Joy, <laughs> joy, joy, yeah. joy, joy. <laughs> so, how's it been for you the past like past two years, man? Did it really hit you like everybody else, or did you manage to stay busy during everything? I actually, well, I hit the road in May. Okay. Oh. In May of the pandemic. Yeah, and um, I'm right, I'm right behind all the, the clubs. The clubs were like, hey, man, we're having like 50 people a night. <laughs> Please come out to the club. So I went out to the clubs. It was it was fiberglass everywhere. And, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and like um, um, rank, everybody yeah. messed up. But I went in and I did it. And I, and I did that for that whole two years. And on God top of bless. that, I just established my own company, you know, okay. and, 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 and really started digging into my full potential. So now I got my company called One Song, and I do my own TV, my own movies, my own music, got my own music label. Nice. Uh, just just finished just Congrats. finished my first single. My first single, my first okay. single uh, came out two weeks ago. It's called the Sweet Reunion. Nice. And it's with it's with Take Six and Dave Cos. Okay. So, okay. You know, just been just been um. You know, not c- continue to take advantage of, of my version. You know, nice, nice. Well, hey, Tommy, man, I I remember because I was with you that show last uh, in 2020. Uh, we had a 50 percent capacity, but Tommy sold out every mm-hmm. show. We had a blast. So Absolutely. make sure man, this we. weekend, guys, man, we. <laughs> January 28th, 29th, man, we got four shows: 7:30, 10:30, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. The Legend. Mr. Tommy Davidson, man, a.k.a. Guys. Varnell Hill. Thank you for a great interview, man. Shit. Nah, love it. We love you, brother. You know hey, that. Bro, thank, thank you, man. You, man. And, we'll say, and hopefully we'll get to see you this weekend. Um, yeah. I, I ain't got no plan, so I'm going to come through and hang out with I'm you, gonna brother. Out, yeah. I'm going to come out, yeah. I'm going to come out and make it creepy. It ain't, it ain't nothing but fun. Come on through. All right, yeah. brother. Hey, man, we love you, man. Thanks for being on, brother. Much love, y'all. Thank y'all so much, yeah. man. All right, take it easy. Have thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Peace, brother. You got it. I made my day. Nice. That was man. nice. Nice. Yeah. Hey, man, we're going to go to commercial break. We'll be back. Real Laughs on Real Radio 104.1. At Real Laughs on Real Radio 104.1. We want to thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. And a big thank you to Mr. Tommy Davidson yes. for joining us in virtual studio. And remember, Tommy Davidson will be at the Orlando Improv this weekend, January 28th and 29th, four shows. Last time he was here, we were doing 50% capacity. Right now, we're at 100 100%. So come on now, sell out them shows, man. And, and it is a great show. Brother got energy. He's singing. He's doing comedy. OG in the game, man. So appreciate y'all coming out. It's Wednesday night, January the 26th. I'm joining the studio with my brothers, Mike Hurley, he, James, John McGill, Cologne. Mike, we missed you, man. What was up this week? Well, you was hanging with the babies? Yeah, man. Yeah, just uh, I, I'll be the first to admit, you know, you look at people's Facebook and Instagram and social media and think everybody's got everything going going good. Got it all figured out, and I just realized I haven't been spending enough time with the kids lately. So I'm trying to. There you go. You know, with our schedules, man, you're doing yeah. comedy, you're doing TV, you're doing radio, and it's like if you don't make the time, the time's not going to be there. Yeah. So and I is it because to, they said something that you just felt like I need, I need to be around my babies? I realized that, like, uh, not to be depressing. And I'm sure we'll fix that in a second somehow. But uh, yeah, man, <laughs> I just realized that every night last week I came home and it was coming home from whatever open mic show anything else and uh i was basically just walking in the room and giving them kisses while they were already sleeping i'm like nah this ain't the way 
what's the sense in doing all this working, man, if you don't get to actually see them when they're awake every now and then? You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so thanks. I appreciate you guys covering me because I yeah, need it. Yeah, man, we had, we had some, some memorable Brother. moments. Yeah, I, 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 I went you on that, man. <laughs> uh, Christmas came and um, my – my 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 kids didn't give me anything for Christmas, which they never do. I'm mm -hmm. just I'm used to. Come on, we you're used to it. You're the dad. I'm, man. I'm, I'm used to it, but my my wife didn't like that at all, and uh, so she took them to go get me something on Christmas Day, uh -huh. and she was like, "What is your dad like?" And they were like, "I don't know. We only see him like once or twice a week because I'm wow. so busy." And I've been on the road like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like last year was my craziest ever, and it hurt her feelings and it hurt mine too. And so now I'm with you, Mike, I'm like, you know what, man, I'm not going to do comedy for a couple of weekends. I'm going to get my babies hanging out with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I I, I I get that feeling, bro. But my my kids is like, and then so I, I talked to my daughter about it and she's like, oh, I didn't mean it like that, dad. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. we don't know what you like. Like, you, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, like but, we just didn't but, know that, but I'm but sorry it, I said it that way. Isn't it that how it goes, though? Like we've already set up in our whatever hierarchy, so society, whatever it may be as dads. We last to get stuff like we hey, hey, on Father's bro. Day. You guys still have to cook. Yeah, bro, you know what I'm saying. Father's I, Day, you I, man I, in I, the I, grill. Hey, yes. but yeah, every Father's Day, I got the smoker. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Still, I'm, I'm smoking it. Yeah. Then on Mother's Day, I'm taking somebody mm. out. I, well, yeah, so Sean out because she's the bonus mm. mom. On her yes. birthday, I'm, yes. I'm taking her out. On yes. my birthday, I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, I like That's the way think it about is. that. Like, Mike, what did you get? You remember what you got for Christmas and Father's Day? Yeah, let me check my credit card receipt because <laughs> yeah. you know that's that's like around Christmas time and Father's Day, you can't be checking your your bank statement because it all comes out of your account anyways. It's like, hmm, yeah. what I buy myself today? Now, <laughs> now, Did I want now, that? Now, usually I jump on board. I'm like, Mike, you absolutely right. All we get for Christmas is a receipt and bills. Mm -hmm. That's it. But I got to yeah. give my kid Noah James credit. And I love the fact he got me a gift. He listened to what I wanted, and I didn't even ask for it. I told him mm -hmm. that I wanted to start uh, uh, recording, not recording. I wanted to start uh, saving some of my shows at work onto like a external hard drive. I said that once in front of him. So on Christmas, he got me a two terabyte external hard drive without me even asking. So I got to oh, shout nice. out Noah James for doing Noah that, James, bro. bro. Noah hey, James, hey, bro. And you know he looked at the rest of the siblings. He was like, here you go, Papa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wills are getting written soon, kids. Wills are getting written soon. You know, every one of those other siblings so saw every other one saw him buy it, and right before, let me put five on that, man. Let me yeah. put five on that. He was basically, he was put basically, my basically, name on it. I'll get you later. No, yeah, like, nah. the third wise man who showed up with gold when everybody else brought frankincense and myrrh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I thought like, we were yo. keeping it under 10, guys. I thought we were keeping just, it under 10 I bucks. I had the gold laying around, and I was like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> hey, <laughs> he walked up in there, like, hey, man, I got Jesus some cool water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah bro, I, brought him, I brought him hay. The other dude like, bro, I brought him a grill. Yeah, I brought the platinum grills. <laughs> you know, but you know who that you know who that third wise man was. That was the one who was basically like, man, I ain't getting him nothing. I'm just gonna give him the money to get his own thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah I'm gonna get him a it. gift card. Hey, gold. Yeah, was that a was a gold gift card. card. <laughs> yeah, a Bethlehem Express card. Hell, yeah, bro. I was thinking about that for Father's Day. Junior, Junior gave me a handshake, and I said, "Yo, what's this?" He said, "Dad, I got you hope for Father's Day." I said, "Bet." So for Christmas, guess what I got, Junior. When he opened up what? that gift, it was a piece of paper that said hope. Oh. <laughs> I'm sharing the wealth. Nice. I, hey, this one, nice. then I gave him 50 bucks. But, yeah, my, yeah. My oldest yeah. asked me one year, he's like, what do you want for Father's Day? I'm like, my life back. He's like, what? I'm like, I don't know, a tie or something, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Something made out of macaroni that I can throw out. Yeah. Dude, I never... I. Ken, you were already a dad. Like my kids are younger than you know you guys. You, James, you got all adults now, right? All adults, yeah. baby. Yeah. Oh, Ken, how old's your youngest? Tw sixteen, baby girl, sixteen, and junior yeah. twenty two Sunday. So when I met you, your kids were a little younger than what my kids are now. Yeah. But some of your jokes now still make me laugh in the middle of the day. Like you got that one joke, like how long do you have to let your child's artwork hang on the fridge before you <laughs> throw that garbage <laughs> out? <laughs> and I'm just sitting here, dude. We have cabinets full of drawings that mean the world to them. But me, I'm just like, man, I could I could really use some space for my extra Adam Sandler DVDs. You know, like can we get rid of? Them? And I will say this: their mother's doing a great job of doing the thing where she takes her camera on her phone, takes a picture, and now we have a digital copy, and that's a good way to 
you know, throw the Mike, oh, I got a smart. picture on the fridge right now. My daughter drew. My daughter's a mm -hmm. tenth grader. I think she was in fourth or fifth grade. It's still wow. on the fridge. I still have when Junior was in um uh, Junior was a baby baby and I went to work and my ex wife they made a, a popsicle um frame mm -hmm. and it's a picture yeah. of me biting junior's ear that's been mm -hmm. on my fridge Aww. since my divorce like i've had that picture like yeah so i joke about getting rid of it but dog i can't i'm I, single i, I have like five fast food menus <laughs> Chinese, a bill bondsman's <laughs> card and then like a really good picture from a show we all did that i'm like this was nice i think my eight-year-old intentionally messes with me because i see what he's capable of drawing but then the ones he gives me <laughs> are the biggest pieces of crap I've ever seen. And then he smiles. He's like, here, daddy, I made this for you. But he's got a smirk that says, yeah, you got to hang it. And there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. I want you to keep some it. of my abstract stuff, daddy. But the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> These were my <laughs> early years. My yeah. blue and brown period. <laughs> so, so, Mike, I got you on, man. And I, I got to mm. talk to you about something. We talked no. today. We've been talking about it a lot lately. Uh, Mike, I, I got an addiction, man. I stopped drinking alcohol. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped Preach. drinking soda. Mm -hmm. I, I I I stopped smoking cigars. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get through a little health. I can vouch that all and that is true. James was there. Was Everybody was him. drinking and smoking. Everybody was and drinking and, did, and he did not drink. Yeah. But mm -hmm. hey, man, you know what my new addiction is, Mike? I'm I'm afraid to ask. That damn TikTok. Bruh, uh, I can't stay <laughs> off of it, James. James, why I can't I quit it. you? I am on it. Every 30 minutes, I'm refreshing. I know. Every 30 Brother, minutes. And at first, I didn't care. Yeah. I man. legit could care less. I'm like, I don't mm -hmm. care about no followers. I don't care about nothing. Then mm -hmm. I got a little bit of followers, Mike. Went a little I viral. I, I got a, a million view video. A million cannot, views. Congratulations. James, I, I cannot stay <laughs> off, off TikTok. I'm, I'm refreshing it right now. Yep. I posted wow, a video bro. when the show started. It is at 5,000. Like, I can't stay off of it man and mm. and and so me and mike was talking today because the main thing we're doing it for is so right now if you guys listening out there for a lot of comedians to get booked it's about followers it's about um yes. influencing and, and and stuff yes. like that so our main thing was to try to get followers but then we watched a video that a friend of ours put up and apparently tiktok don't want to pay up bro do you know mm. tiktok mm. is paying not. people two cents Per thousand, Mike? Am I right? A average. Some people are making average. less than that. Some people make it a few cents more. Damn. Cent. So I got a Son. million view video, bro. That's twenty dollars. But you weren't in the cre here's the and thing. And I wasn't too. even in the creator, in the creator thing. thing. You got yeah. you gotta have like ten thousand followers before you're even eligible to start earning money. Yeah. So Ken just that million view video got him the ten thousand followers, and now they're like, guess what? Start all over. No, that counts. I start all over. <laughs> Well, Ken, let me teach you a TikTok secret. Mm -hmm. Behind your left shoulder needs to be whatever brand you sold sponsorship to on your TikTok video. So when you're doing your TikTok video, right behind you, that Arby's sign is just flashing in the corner. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even eat Arby's. That's, I'm yeah. It don't matter. Start, I'm once they start, start paying you. Hey, no. yeah, you think those NASCAR though. drivers really go to McDonald's? You know? Yeah. Hey, Come on, man. Hey, bro, Bubba 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 Lou's Lou's about to get mad love. Yeah, <laughs> Bubba Lou's. <laughs> Bubba Lou's about to get mad love for me, man. But man, Mike, I was so disappointed. I was so mm. disappointed, man. When, when you see me that Ben Brainer video, shout out to Ben Brainer for for putting us on. I, I mm. do. I almost didn't post a video today. Like I was that hurt that I'm like, yo, I'm, no. I'm doing all this, and I really want them view. I really want the views and the follows. Mm. But I was thinking I'm about to make this extra money. I got a mm -hmm. Alexa income coming in, and, and yeah, it's when not you, that. When you see a guy like Ben who has, what, like 5 million followers now? Are you up yeah. there? Jeez. Are you up there? But I will say this. Um, ben Brainerd, if you haven't checked him out, go check him out. TikTok, YouTube. You've seen his videos. I guarantee it's the one where he personifies every state sitting around a meeting table Florida. having conversations about it, like everything. Uh, he's doing really well for himself right now. We're very happy for him. Uh, but he broke it down and he showed how much he made on Facebook, which you can now monetize your videos on Facebook as well. Uh, he's on YouTube, of course, and he's on TikTok. And when he broke it down, it was something like for the month of December, he made 4,500 on Facebook, close to five grand on YouTube, and then $482 wow. on TikTok. But he had the most views on there. Yeah. Now, he did say this, TikTok is great for capturing your audience. 
getting your followers, but then you got to find a way to pull them over to your other platforms. And the other thing that TikTok does, which is, you know, of course, what we were just talking about, if you're not really looking to make a ton of money on social media, but you're looking to build up your fan base, fan base, fan base, TikTok is amazing for that. So if you can translate that into butts and deceits, and those aren't numbers you see, like how many people are showing up at his shows that are just from TikTok, because that's a different type of uh, income over there, you know? So wow. I think, Ken, you know, it's it's hard for me because like I was already at 2000 followers when you were at like 120. And then I told these guys last week, I'm like, yeah, me and Ken are in a race. Ken don't know, though. Don't tell him. I don't need to try and harder. <laughs> <laughs> but then to watch you like and I've been pushing myself a little bit, too. And I think I'm going to hit I'm hoping to hit 10,000 followers by the end of the week. I might come up a little short. I think I'm close to six right now. But, you know. That was my goal for January to start pushing the social media a little harder. I started with like 1500. I'm up to close to six. So really the whole secret, and I think Ben even told you this with TikTok, just consistently, consistently. post. It's going to happen, man. You just got to keep posting. I, me and my wife, because at first my wife was the one paying more attention to it than me. I was just like, eh. I was, I think, 17 videos into the 30 day commercial thingy. I was this like 17 videos when I finally the Budweiser video. Uh -huh. I, I, told, I told Sean when I if I hit fifty thousand followers, I'm gonna drink a Budweiser. I don't even <laughs> like Budweiser, but Ugh. I was James. I was at uh, part seventeen of the creepy commercials, which and I like. That was by the, the way. video. That was thank you, brother. That was the video that wow. I was at fifty thousand, and I went to bed. I woke up. It was at two hundred thousand, and it just wow. kept going and going. I was like, all right, well, let me post another one, and then I called Mike. And Mike was like, you got to post it to work. what good time. And I, shout out to Hurley, he though. Hurley, he was like, hey, you got to cut this on. And you got to mm. do this. And you got to do that. Because I didn't uh, know any of that stuff, It's man. like everything in life. I'm great at telling other people how to do it, but I can't do it myself. So, yeah. So, oh, man, oh, yo, man. So, that's my new addiction. If you got TikTok vids by Ken, uh, of you, if also, what you got, Hurley, what show us? Oh, uh, at Mike Hurley. Mike that with the Y. Mike Hurley. James, You'll you and you Miguel ticket talking. I'm I not. Take, I, haven't, I haven't dropped anything on this one, uh, and I gotta find out what my name is because I don't really know stuff sometimes about mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, why Miguel? It's Miguel Cologne comic, just like my uh, my IG. Okay, okay, cool. Miguel Cologne comic. So make sure you go follow all three of us, man. Uh, Mike does uh, Jameson and the joke. I do uh, creepy but funny ass commercial, and Miguel. Um, I'm just gonna review all your TikToks. And he's just gonna. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, oh, this was a good one by Ben Brainer. Y'all hey, watch. We, <laughs> hey, we're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, I'm about to tell y'all what restaurants your ass should not be eating at. We'll be okay. right back. Real Labs and Real Radio 104.1. Nightcap of Comedy. Guys, make sure you please go out there and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We are now uploading all of our shows onto YouTube now. So you get to see these beautiful faces. You get to you hear us on the radio. But you get to see these beautiful faces. So make sure you go to um, YouTube and find us. Also, um, go to the iHeart <laughs> app. And you can also um, um, search Real Laughs. And you can find our, our podcast out there and listen to the podcast, man. Join the studio. James John, Miguel Colon, Jr. What? And Mr. Mike Hella mm -hmm. man. There you go. There Fun you night go. tonight, man. We had um, Tommy Davidson on. Talk a little TikTok. Now I got to talk about something that we love. And if anybody listens to this show, no. We love okay. us some food. What? Boy, we love. Whoa. We did. We talked about food last night, bro. Sure we did. love us sure some food, hey, man. By the way, hey. if Bojangles is listening to this, holla at your boy. Come oh, on, man. man. I could be. I'm gonna tell Bojangles. Bojangles front me a package, and I'll take over a corner. All right. <laughs> just front me a package. I'll muscle up, Bojangles. Hey. You just front me a package. Hey, and we know how to cook that. We told y'all last yeah. night. We know how to cook that coke and that crack. So, yeah, bro, man. Mm. You give us them biscuits, bro. Mm. We'll be on the corner, bro. We I had set up shop game. early, right, right, right in front of a churches. Because church mm. is what I'll take first. I'm not going to push a Popeye corner just yet. But yeah, I'll get, get cute with the property line with the churches real see, quick. See, see, I'm different, bro. I'll push out of a KFC. Church is in the hood. Yeah, so I, I ain't got the manpower yet. True but that. KFC you know I mean? ain't got the clientele. Through. Church has got some loyal clientele because because they willing to get shot for it. Yeah, and yeah, so and then the church has got that fried jalapeno. And we got we got that. I'm saying we already Popeyes. I'm with the team. Uh, you know we got that Bo pickled Jangle, jalapeno. Uh, Bo Jagger, my bad. But yeah, I'll uh I'll push up. I'll push up real quick. Yeah, yeah. So, I, the I churches will go sit up churches... in the morning. 
Church has got an eight piece for two ninety nine. People kill for that. Mm. Yeah. You, <laughs> I'll take out a Maryland fried dark, chicken baby. tomorrow. Okay, oh. I take out Merlin's. I take out yeah. Merlin's. I take Bro. out Wing Stop, Wing House, any of the wings. I Man, I was just talking to someone today. Again. Chicken prices and beef prices are like all the way up there. I guess over oh, yeah. at uh, I guess over at Pizza Hut, uh, six wings is like ten bucks now. Wings remember, are, six wings are like uh, twenty five cent, thirty five cent wing night place. Ten cent wings when I was a uh, kid. You know, I'd see the sign. Ridiculous, man. Nah, not yeah, anymore, son. Man. Not anymore. Nah, I'll, 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 I'll tell. I'll straight up tell Bojangles. Yo, let, yo, let me undersell chicken prices right now to push out these cats. Hey. See Ooh. who can survive a war. And then, and then, what, yo, the, the chicken wars. You think last time the chicken wars were hot? Mm -hmm. These chicken wars. I'm, I'm gonna go straight, straight to Bojangles. Fly straight to their headquarters, like when when Scarface went to see the dude Ooh, in Columbia. Yeah, we go straight to the supplier. We mm -hmm. don't, we don't do the middle man. We man. go straight to El Chapo, baby. Mm. Like, I like you, Miguel, Chapo, but I don't know if I can trust you with seven hundred thousand thighs. I'm like, I understand, but I want fourteen hundred thighs. <laughs> <laughs> 1. 4 million thighs. Yeah, uh, putting them out on the street, and they always like, "Yo, you that's a lot. Like a lot, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of weight. You sure you can push that?" Mm. Listen, put it on my name. Put it on Ken's children. I can push that. Uh, that's right. <laughs> okay. 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 Put it on hey, James's uh, okay. family. It's cool. James it's is like, hey, it's cool. Right. If it doesn't hey, work hey, out. Yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, Colonel, <laughs> give him what he wants. <laughs> Ain't that how every drug movie goes? Yeah, yeah. You gotta convince him, and once you mm -hmm. convince him, hey, hey, give him what. Bo Jangles dude's gonna call me up. I thought I told you a long time ago not to screw me, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> I just so got funny. a whole a whole mound of flour on the table, and I'm just dunking my head. <laughs> You're dunking chicken in the <laughs> Bojangles mix. I got all these half naked girls with masks on, yeah. dunking the chicken twice and frying it up. Yeah, you got four people that done died on the line from Santa yeah. Bella. <laughs> I'm loading it up. I'm loading it all up on trucks that say like soap and they're just driving it out. <laughs> but man, we love food. We love talking about food. So but I gotta give y'all the dirty side of the restaurant industry. My Not wife sent me side. this thing, man. Um, they did. I, I had to do the math on it. Um, they have 576 restaurants in Orange County alone. This just Orange County mm. that had inspections. Out of yeah. that 576, James, only four 444 passed. Oh, that means 131 restaurants did not pass their initial inspection, mm. bro. And let me tell you something right now, man. I worked in restaurants for a long time in all different. I mean, I bus tables. I've been a bartender. I've been a server. I've been a manager. I've been a trainer. And uh, when the food inspection guy comes through, he'll yeah. let them. He'll let some things slide if you give yeah. him like a free burger. Like you yeah. don't say, "Hey, here's a free burger. Make that a B plus." But if you go, hey, man, can I get you something to eat? Yeah, man, if I could get like a bacon cheeseburger, that'd be cool. All right. Hey, man, I'm supposed to write you off because I saw those fruit flies around the service bar. But you're, you're good, man. I'm like, all right, thanks. You know, don't, worry, don't worry about the larva and the wing sauce either. Yeah, oh, some, oh, of, the, some oh. of the food inspectors, Ken, they come old school like oh, it's an oh. Italian neighborhood in the 20s. They got the white suit on. And yeah. they're just Everybody, uh, Mr. Food Inspector, uh, I yeah. had some wings. He's like, grazie, grazie. For, <laughs> for a, a food inspector wearing a white suit, he's not going to get dirty. That says yeah. right <laughs> I'm not going looking for nothing, so we're going to sell this in the lobby. I tell you yeah. this though, I worked I worked at some restaurants where we had the same food inspector come over and over, and there were things that they would if they saw that was there would be a problem. They're gonna say, but there are other things where they come to you and they're like, "Hey, uh, you know, you're supposed to have tongs by the lemons," and you're like, "All right, all right, I'll get that, I'll get that." There was a lot of like leeway. So when a food inspector shuts a place down, it's mm, generally yeah. gross. You know, because yeah. they give you lots of leeway of like, hey, man, them cups aren't supposed to be on a rack that close to this. So move it mm -hmm. when they know it's just like, oh, I didn't know. Also, though, as management, when the food inspector comes by, there's some servers or bartenders. They're like, you get out of here right now. You got off. You go. You go now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not going to be here during this. inspection. And, and it's crazy. The stuff that they, you know, they found like like one was a guy drinking a soda next as he was preparing food like he had an open soda oh, while he yeah, was you preparing can't, food you have a top on it yeah yeah you gotta have Absolutely. a top on it but but the crazy thing is when you look at the huh, one two three four five six seven eight nine top ten out of the top ten seven of them are mexican or chinese restaurants whoa yeah, man because they because hey. they pumping it out whoa yeah. You get mad, you get mad, you gotta wait more yeah. than 10 minutes at a Chinese restaurant. Well, guess True. what? You're gonna have to put up with some things. Yeah. Mm. You right. want your food and, in 10 minutes? And mm. I can guarantee you that food is 
Amazing. Yeah. Fuck okay. yeah. Bro, oh, yeah. I, I think uh, some of this is racism. Bro. I think some of this is racism. Yeah. We've talked about this before, and I, I think it bears repeating. You can tell a lot by a restaurant by how clean they keep the public areas. Like if you walk yeah. into uh, Applebee's and the bathroom is like bang and clean, Big that's bad. a good sign because that means they're keeping that clean because they know you're going to see that. When you walk into a restaurant and the bathroom is like filthy, if they're if they know the public is walking in there and it's a mess, think about what they're doing in the places that you don't get yeah. to see. Yeah. And you know, I will go on record. Thing. I have never gone to a Chinese restaurant that's bathroom didn't look like they spent fifty thousand dollars more on their bathroom mm -hmm. yeah. than the restaurant. You I go wanna, in there and it's all tile everywhere with like a waterfall. You're like, this is a strip mall Chinese restaurant. I want to yeah. get this right, and I think it's I think it's Ricky Ray's who used to have the joke. He would explain all that, and then he'd be like, "And that's why I won't date a girl with dirty toes, you know? Because if you see it, and she's got dirty toes, she knows you're gonna see her toes. If those things are filthy, don't even think about the other stuff, man." Oh, that is uh, so, James. I know. Well, all three of y'all worked in the mm -hmm. food industry. Absolutely. When I worked in the food industry, I was a young, young, young mm -hmm. warhog, so I didn't mm -hmm. get to see. The inspection, but have you guys been a part of an inspection where you like yeah, where where, where they mm -hmm. find, where they found something that was like mm -hmm. you was like ooh I didn't even know that mm -hmm. I never like, been like, in one where the they, nastiest though I never been in a nasty one I've been in one where they were like because yeah. a lot of times they'll assign somebody to go with the inspector like hey go with yes. the inspector yes. uh, if you like any yeah. kind of supervisory position or you know restaurant business supervisory means hey guess what you supervisor now mm -hmm. go with the inspector and you're like all mm -hmm. right. But you will learn things you never knew. And I tell you, like, some of them are like, I remember we had a pizza area and they were mm -hmm. like, oh, uh, they were like, the, 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 like technically, and I know this sounds dumb, but like the gloves weren't supposed to be right near everything. Like the gloves were supposed mm -hmm. to be in an area away. That's right. And I'm like, yo, I don't want to say anything, but we all walk down here munching pepperoni mm -hmm. all the time from mm -hmm. this little area. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, and nobody ever threw on a pair of gloves to grab pepperoni they were about yeah. to eat from the pizza line. I'll, I'll tell you one of the one you learn how to be a Jedi, Ken, if you're the guy that has to walk with that guy, because a little bit of magician kicks in a little bit of misdirection. Like one of the things that doesn't get done enough in restaurants is you need to burn the ice every night in any bin. Like if it's behind the bar or it's at yes. the soda machine, you yeah, should be you about hot water. You should take hot water, uh -huh, dump it down it. there, melt all that ice and clean it out. And what a lot of people do, I don't want to say a lot of people, but what some restaurants do is they just fill that ice back up rather than clean it out. You should clean yeah. that every night. So I worked in a restaurant that wasn't known for that. And this was in South Florida. So you all safe up here, but it wasn't <laughs> known for that. But whenever the inspector came in, I knew if he was going to dig down into that ice, he might find uh, things that shouldn't be there. So as soon as he would walk by the ice bin, I'd be like, hey, man. Could you tell me, do you think the outlets for our heat lamp is too close to the line? And he's like, let's take a look. And that's all you have to do. You just got to keep, keep them swinging away. Keep them moving around. Look over here so you're not looking over here. There you so. go. James, you, what's, you saw something nasty? What's something? That, and not, not that you did it. Like the inspector came in. You was like, ooh, I didn't even okay. know that. When I worked at Disney, they would get us a, a team together of food service directors, and we would go give what they call fresh eyes to another location. Basically, you're going there to get them ready for their state inspection. So you would just mm -hmm. go there and point out stuff they need to fix. So we saw some stuff that uh, I, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> exactly what we saw. Let's just mm -hmm. say there were living things inside food that was kept in the big walk-in. Whoa. They were like, that yeah. mouth protects us yeah. from spiders. All right, <laughs> he's got to live in here. If you work exactly. in some bars, they're like, they're like, hey man, there's way too much cocaine residue on the baby changing table. They're like, what's a good amount? Here's, <laughs> let's just say there was uh, things running around uh, and it wasn't Mickey or Minnie. Mm -hmm. oh, Here's man. another quick tip: if you're at a bar and you order a pint of beer or mm -hmm. a beverage and they give you a pint glass, if you look on the side of the glass and you see bubbles sticking to the inside of the glass, mm -hmm. that means that glass probably got washed or dipped in sanitizer or soap, but it still has some of that residue on it. It wasn't yep. rinsed pop properly. Because mm -hmm. if that was a clean glass, all those bubbles should just go right to the top and nothing should be sticking on the inside. So always look Ooh, for that yeah. in your glass. Everybody's too. always a little freaked about the drop sinks too. When yeah, like yeah. Uh, it's just three liquids, you drop a, a cup and you're like, Clean. Sanitize, That's what it's called, yeah. a drop stick. Yeah, because it's just drop, yeah. sinks. drop sink, drop sink. sink. Okay. So you got three yeah. sinks. You got one for washing, one for rinsing, and one has a sanitizer. Sanitizer, and it's supposed to be changed every like two hours yeah. or so. But yeah. truthfully, it's probably the same one from the bars morning shift yeah at the night shift you're like so, i'm just dropping like, it in straight beer on this third one yeah have you, have you seen <laughs> miguel have you seen on really busy nights where the bartenders are just like miming 
Yeah, doing, not even dropping them. <laughs> don't even go into the water. They're just like, like uh, uh, refill with draft beer. Uh, uh, refill with draft beer. I had a girl at work with she's like, everything, right? Yeah. It's going to be some strong alcohol, man. Alcohol's yeah. not going to be on the outside <laughs> of the cup. So yeah. I had Talk a girl tell me one time, she's like, I'm not putting my hand in that drop stick. It's gross. Yeah. How many times <laughs> you get a wine, how many times you get a wine glass with lipstick on it? But oh, if, you're, oh, oh. if you bartend for years, you're like, eh, just wipe it or drink from yeah. the other side. I'll be fine. <laughs> oh. Goodness. You know what's another one? The lines on the soda machines, like oh, for the guns and stuff. Because no. we only no, no, clean no. the spigot, they only clean the front at, of it a lot of times. You know, at night you have to take the nozzles off of these soda fountain machines, and soak them, and soak those overnight. Because if you, yeah, now that I did yeah, know, yeah, I remember yeah. um the place in um in Eatonville, Kathy's Wings. I don't know if you remember Kathy's Wings. I don't think it, so, when no. I first moved here, it was a big. It was a night. It was the wing spot in the hood, mm -hmm. and they had failed inspection because they had roaches in the line. The soda lines. Oh, so you get God. the soda. It's like you know what I mean. So they, it's closed down. It's been closed Damn. down for years, man. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man. Wings were fire, said, weren't yeah, they? Man. So I, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I had to bring it up, man. We ain't, we ain't got much time left, man. Hey guys, we gonna appreciate y'all for tuning in tonight. Miguel, where you at this weekend, brother? Uh, this weekend I'm not gonna be anywhere. I'm probably gonna watch Tommy Davidson. But February 20th, I'm gonna be at the Orlando Improv. It's me, Morgan Gallo. Um. Marcus Crespo, Dwayne Williams, and Sean Madden, and Jeff Kaufman. It's going to be a great show. That's oh, February nice. 20th. Tickets are available at the OrlandoImprov.com, or you can hit me up on social media. James, where you at this weekend, brother? I am actually home this weekend, but I got a corporate gig on Monday. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there Wednesday. <laughs> I just okay. Got for it. <laughs> nice. I'm going to be at the same place this week. No, actually, the Wednesday after you. Okay. I, well, hold on, hold. On. Never mind. We might be talking about something different. Oh, I think I we think, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're somewhere on, where you gonna be at on Valentine's Day. That's when we'll be next Wednesday. I got I'm gonna my, be at Kathy's wing, I got, rocking yeah, it yeah, up. I got, them ropes, I got my, I got my stuff mixed up. Mike, where you at this weekend? Uh, this weekend I'm off, man. But Thursday night I'm gonna be at the Barley and Vine Beer Garden. They got a new showcase going on down there in the Milk District. So I believe that's at eight o'clock. It's been packed out every week, and they're actually adding Saturday shows starting next month. So they're doing really good things over there. It's two guys who moved down from Boston. Two comedians run that place. And yeah, I heard yeah, but hit things. me up, man. I haven't mm -hmm. had a chance to to hit them back yet because they're talking about moving it to Saturday to do both shows on Saturday. Yeah, and that, Saturday. that was the same for me uh, from like a couple of months. I've just told them, hey, man, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. And finally, it just came to a week where I got the time. Let's yeah. do it. It's so Thursday of the year, night man. So, fun. Yeah, beginning of the year, you're like, I ain't yeah. got no dates, man. Let me go on add some stuff in there, man. Stay fresh. Hey, guys, we appreciate y'all so much for tuning in. Remember, man, go find us on Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook, and or go to iHeartRadio and search Real Labs so you can listen to our podcast. Hey, man, we're going to be uploading all the videos to YouTube going forward so you get to see these beautiful faces. Um, James got a, a, a button up on, so you got... You can see James in the button up, man. But go. thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow night, Mike Hurley, he will be in the big chair. Thank you guys for listening. God bless you and good night. Mike Hurley on TikTok. I got to beat Cat Miller.